and uh, it is the largest social network, like I said, according to Comscore. And uh, as you can see, we are one of the re reasons why uh, Facebook is not doing too well in, 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 in Russia. Uh, so the other name of the company is uh, Vcontact, sometimes uh, pronounced on the West. But the international brand is VK. Uh, so we have 33 million daily unique visitors. Uh, and uh, we've been growing very fast lately. Uh, you can see this uh, New Year celebration in, in Russia by this graph. Uh, and it's probably one of the reasons why we banned uh, advertisements promoting alcoholic beverages on our network. Uh, because you, you see this kind of embarrassing. Uh, so, 33 million daily unique visitors, about 17 million monthly actives, uh, and, uh, oh, well, maybe 160 uh, million registered users. Uh, so, so, Comscore says we are the first, the fourth most viewed website among Europeans, uh, which, is, which is pretty good. And you can see that there, there are five uh, top sites there, and uh, you have three American companies and three European companies, and apparently we could, we could do much better. So Europe, we can do a lot more to improve this. Uh, and uh, that, I think that's about it. That's the last slide I have on BK, because it's not really the reason I uh, came here today. Um, so. We, we tried hard to find uh, a metric in which VK would be the first one. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Comscore come to our rescue. And you get this uh, absolute leader in user engagement in Europe slide. Uh, and, and obviously, we uh, are the most efficient tool in uh, wasting your time. So if, if you want to lose more time than you really do, feel free to join. Uh, yeah, so l l let's switch to, 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 to the main topic of uh, our meeting today. It's, it's Wikipedia. What, why I think that Wikipedia is important? First of all, uh, unlike VK, which is a, which is a financially it's a profitable product and it has a clear uh, and uh, predictable financial future, the, 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 the financial future of Wikipedia is not that predictable. At, at the same time, Wikipedia uh, is by far is, uh, a more, much more important uh, web service uh, for the global community, and uh, it, it is always underestimated. I think that Wikipedia, Wikipedia is arguably the most important uh, digital project uh, created so far uh, by humankind, and uh, I will try to prove this idea. So uh, I, I realized that Wikipedia may be more important than we are used to think when uh, I saw that seven out of ten times I search something on the internet, I end up uh, looking on a Wikipedia article. So 70% uh, of my Google searches bring me to Wikipedia. And then goes this question, why? Why, why does that happen? It happens, uh, obviously, because Wikipedia contains a lot of uh, structured and objective information. That's exactly what you're searching for uh, on the internet. That's, that's what you want to get. Uh, and then it occurred to me that there are, there are different, not, not every web project is like that. There are different kinds of uh, web projects, and some of them uh, aim at uh, collecting uh, and structuring uh, information, while the other ones are, are doing a lot to facilitate human communication, interaction between individuals. And then I, there's, there's a whole range of uh, uh, web services in between. Some, some, parts, some of them are concerned about gathering information, uh, some of them are only, are only about communication. And, on this slide, you see the, the, the web services on the right that don't have, they don't store, don't accumulate it widely useful information. Well, the, 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 the services on the left, they do this. 
and the services of the left they grow more and more important and more and more useful uh, as times go by and they accumulate more and more widely uh, useful and searchable information. And sure, you have some websites in between like uh, Facebook which is basically about communication but at the same time it uh, has a vast database of profiles and uh, social graph and interest graph and so on. Um, and then th there's another metric with which we can compare uh, web projects. But last thing I want to say about uh, this slide is that the projects on the left tend to be more robust and more long term because the ones on the right are often prone to fashion. You can use one instant messaging today, one instant messaging system today, and then switch to some other instant messaging tomorrow. Uh, so, but, but those on the left, they, they, they're more long term. They're more important. Uh, and then, this is funny, uh, I call it greed access. Uh, well, the, the greed access uh, doesn't, doesn't mean that the more greedy you get, the more profitable you become. Uh, in most cases, it's the other way around. Uh, but I put some uh, social networks in here because uh, social networking is something that I'm involved in. in and uh, you see classmates.com at the top, one of the first social networks, but it was so greedy that it charged its users for uh, sending private messages and uh, eventually uh, it came to decline. And then you have Studiwiese, a very famous uh, German uh, social network uh, that came to decline for approximately the same reasons. They, they were too, they were, there were many factors at play, but they were too hard on adver ad advertisements and uh, uh, users become less loyal to them. But why is it important to be uh, more altruistic and less greedy? It's important because uh, this, uh, well, mo most uh, uh, web services rely on user-generated information. And since uh, user-generated information is so important for them, uh, users must not feel uh, offended, they must not feel used by the servers. Uh, they, uh, they must feel that uh, the this, this service cares about them. So greediness is something that, the, the, the greed axis is, is, is how the users uh, perceive uh, the, the platform as greedy or as not greedy. Uh, you, you see that Google Plus it doesn't actually have any advertisements right now, so uh, it's the most altruistic this year. Uh, and so when we combine the greed access and, and, and the information communication access, we can get some interesting results. Uh, so these are some examples that, that I found. Uh, you, you can see communication information uh, as X and altruism as agric. And what you could see here is that Wikipedia is uh, on the uh, right upper position, which I think is the best sport if we, uh, s if we talk about how long this project will survive and uh, how long it will live. Uh, why do I think so? I think that altruism is important for, for a project to be long term, uh, and we could see this by looking at uh, classmates.com or StudioVZ or MySpace. Uh, and, and I think that uh, communication information is also important uh, for a project to be uh, robust. So Wikipedia is basically on the, in the best spot here. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to say about, about it is that humanity, uh, well, there's a theory that humanity uh, is different from the rest of the biosphere uh, with its uh, because of its ability to transfer its knowledge to, to the next generation. That's the most distinguishing uh, trait that makes us evolve as a species throughout the last, last maybe 20,000 years. Uh, we don't evolve biologically, but we evolve culturally, scientifically, in terms of data we accumulate. And Wikipedia is probably the best effort so far to, to accumulate the, the knowledge of humanity uh, on a large scale throughout uh, the widest range of sources. And Wikipedia thus could be regarded as uh, the memory section of uh, the global brain phenomenon, uh, which uh, my friend and partner Yuri Milner likes to talk about. Uh, so 
since Wikipedia is a part of this global brain phenomenon, and since Wikipedia is here for a long time, I think we underestimate uh, its importance. We uh, often take it for granted, but really, uh, Wikipedia is, is more vulnerable than we used to think, and uh, uh, since it does a lot for us, I think it would be good to, to, to do a lot for Wikipedia. It's, uh, it, 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 and I think that uh, I could start by, by saying that uh, I'm personally uh, ready to donate one million dollars to Wikipedia and I hope that Jimmy and the board will approve this decision and accept the donation. Uh, and uh, I... <laughs> Come on. Come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate this, thank you. Thank you. But, but the reason I came here today, the reason I traveled from St. Petersburg to, today, by the way, it's my first uh, public appearance and my first uh, conference. Uh, I, I didn't feel the need to do this before. Uh, thank you. Is, is that I think that, uh, well, there are a lot of uh, obviously, there are a lot of uh, successful people here uh, who, who, who do a lot more for Wikipedia because, you know, Wikipedia is, is, uh, is doing more, for, for example, for education system. We talked yesterday about education system a lot, but uh, I, I feel that it, Wikipedia does more to educate uh, young people and uh, middle-aged people and old people uh, than, than some of the governments of the world. So, so I, I don't think it's, it's really fair what is happening right now when Wikipedia has to uh, uh, take contributions throughout several months in a, in a year. And the situation could be improved. And um, so I really uh, call for, for action here that, that we support Wikipedia in a broader way than we did before. Thank you. It's the first time at DLD we have action at this point. <laughs> really, really it's, it's very impressive. I think, Jimmy, you would like to comment also and give an update um, on the Wikipedia. Yeah, situation. great. Um, I guess, uh, very good. I guess my first question uh, for you, though, before I uh, have anything to say is how old are you? Well, uh, 27. 27. I remember when I was 27. I wasn't giving anybody a million dollars. Amazing. So, uh, well, obviously, we've had a very uh, interesting week um, in, in the past week with the with the global Wikipedia blackout, which ended up being a massive uh, success. Um, thank you. Um, it was. Uh, it's actually interesting when we think about your your axis there of, of where we sit uh, in the whole internet ecosphere. Um, it's really a, a very special place, I think, and it's one of the things that has allowed our community uh, to take this kind of action. Um, one of the things about Wikipedia and the Wikipedia community is that we do view our mission a bit more broadly than just Wikipedia itself. We're part of the culture and we also want to defend the parts of the culture that enabled and empowered uh, Wikipedia and all of the other great sources of the internet to actually happen. Uh, we think that's very important. But also because we are a nonprofit, um, our decision making uh, to take an action like this is very, very different from um, any other organization. Uh, it was not, the, this decision was not taken in a top-down way. Um, I can only take credit for having the idea uh, and proposing it to the community, after which an enormous uh, conversation happened uh, that culminated in a vote of the community that was overwhelmingly in favor of taking this action. Uh, but because we are in this uh, space where we exist from donations, um, we didn't have to have that agonizing decision that you might have to have about what is this going, you know, 
are we going to give up all our revenue for one day? Uh, you know, if you are uh, a company like Google, who obviously does also very deeply care about openness on the internet and so forth, you still have shareholders, you still have um, a very large infrastructure to pay for, and for Google to go black for a day uh, would cost them an enormous amount of money. Uh, one reporter asked me, well, gee, how much revenue do you think you'll lose because of this day? And I just, uh, A, the question had never even occurred to me to think about, that we just don't think in those terms, and B, if I do stop to think about it, I think the net impact on our revenue, of course, would be positive because one of the reasons people donate to Wikipedia is because we are this principled organization uh, that stands for openness and knowledge and so forth, and this was a meaningful thing to have done. Uh, so uh, I think, you know, being in this uh, spot, it gives us the ability to do things like that, but also I think a responsibility uh, to be there. For a lot of people, they, they thought, wow, this is amazing. Wikipedia has never been at all political before. But I think they didn't notice uh, that we've always been a little bit political in some subtle ways. So for example, back in the day when uh, Google decided to compromise in China, um, that was when it really became obvious to me that we could not. Uh, and so we never compromise with censorship in China. Uh, we've always spoken out against it. We speak out against censorship anywhere in the world. Um, and if it starts to come home in the U.S. and somebody wants to set up a, a new law that's going to filter DNS, uh, we're going to say, no, that's not something that's okay with us. Uh, so it is um, a wonderful thing to be in, in this space where we are. So it's great. Good. <clears throat> I think any web project is, uh, on the net is grateful for Wikipedia to take a stand you know, in saying this, but from, from the part of our company, I must admit that U United States laws don't <laughs> affect us, and, <laughs> and the other thing, we don't really have any problems with the copyright in Russian legal system. So, but but it, obviously it would affect us in some future if uh, uh, this law was taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's uh, interesting here is I think there's two ways that law in the U.S. can affect people in, in other places. Um, you know, one way is this law was specifically aimed at foreign, from the U.S. perspective, websites. Uh, and in fact, um, you know, I had several people in, in the UK say, well, why should we care about this? And I said, well, for example, the UK startup industry should care about this almost more than anybody else because they're doing startups in English uh, that instead of being subject to the DMCA takedown and notice provisions, you could be subject to these provisions instead, which get your website completely shut down very quickly, or, or at least you, you lose financial access to the US market very quickly. Uh, it could be very dangerous for people overseas. In fact, I, I felt like there was a little bit of short-sighted misunderstanding. If you think about it, um, if you think of a company like Google, if, if Google were a strictly mercenary company, um, they might say, this is a great idea because it's going to cut out loads of competition all around the world. Uh, it's a great way for uh, Facebook to go after vContact, uh, for example. Uh, so why isn't Facebook in favor of it? I think it's because these companies realize the second thing, which is US law will inspire uh, changes to law elsewhere. Uh, and if we have poorly designed laws that don't actually solve the problems that are meant to solve but put up all of these regulatory barriers, it's bad for the entire industry, it's bad for the general public and so forth. So, um, uh, you know, it, it's, we can't think of the internet as being, oh, well that's, you know, everything is global now. What happens in one country affects all the countries, uh, particularly with respect to internet regulation. Absolutely. So, it's great. So, what should we do next? It's really interesting because when, when I'm looking around, you know, people are saying, well, would you ever do this again? And I say, well, I hope not. I don't think so. Uh, but then you, you begin to realize some of the other laws that are out there. Right now, one of the things that a lot of people are raising concerns about is ACTA, uh, which is um, you should go and read about it. It's one of these typical treaty kinds of things. It's, it's been uh, negotiated under lots of secrecy. Uh, it's now being signed by different countries. Uh, the European Parliament has an opportunity to say no to it, and I hope that they will. Uh, different individual countries have the opportunity to say no along the way. Um, I have a feeling it's been signed by the U.S., but that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot because it hasn't been approved by the Congress. Uh, so it's been signed in a, in a certain negotiating phase. Uh, 
but if, if legislation is needed to implement it in the U.S., they're going to have to go to the U.S. Congress, and I have a feeling that after the beating we gave them last week, uh, they're not going to be interested in doing anything for a year or so. Uh, but that's just one example. Uh, another example, there's a law uh, that's, that's being proposed. It's made it through committee, and it will come to the House floor. Um, and of course, it's, this is a law about uh, child predators and about child pornography. So this is a very serious issue. Uh, unfortunately, it's such a serious and real issue uh, that people do feel very strongly about, and for good reasons, that oftentimes logic goes out, out the window. And so uh, this law was proposing massive record keeping requirements for US ISPs. Um, they want to track everything. And as some, somebody pointed out, if you, if you think, well, okay, yeah, it's good, why don't we keep more records? Uh, remember that we live in an era of uh, the, the hacking group Anonymous and WikiLeaks, um, and how many of you would like to have your browsing records stolen from your ISP uh, and posted on the internet? Uh, that could be very painful to people and, and could easily happen. And so mandating that we keep more and more records on people is probably a very bad idea, even if we think, gee, this problem of uh, abuse of children is one that deserves serious attention. So I think we're going to have to be very, very vigilant going forward. Uh, and one of the things that I hope to see is uh, now, at least I hope, there's a, a window of opportunity here for Hollywood to come to the table and talk to Silicon Valley uh, um, with a little bit more humility uh, to know that uh, actually we appreciate, you know, when, when we see Rupert Murdoch on Twitter claiming that uh, Google is uh, a pirate and, and leading the pirate movement, it's, it's nonsense, it's completely insane. And when you've got people on the other side thinking they can get away with statements like that, we're, we're not close to actually having a discussion about the real issues. Uh, now there may be an opportunity to say, look, this is not uh, our movement. We, we have no uh, reason to defend piracy at all. I have no interest in piracy. Um, I have to say, I have to confess, actually, how ignorant I am about some of these things. I had never in my life even heard of mega upload even once. I had no idea. Apparently, it's very popular. Um, but uh, you know, now we have this opportunity to say, look, I think people say, look, we do want to deal, if there are serious criminal organizations engaging in large-scale piracy, um, and it's, a, it's an actual serious problem, then let's start to deal with that, but let's deal with that in ways that don't involve censoring the internet, that don't involve these sort of ridiculous and technologically incompetent ideas. Uh, let's actually have a serious conversation about what to do about some of these problems. Um, and I think we have that opportunity now, um, and we should, we should take it. Good. It was, uh, I just have to say one thing, I, I think that, um, and if, we, if, if anybody wants to report, an, an, here's a nice headline, uh, Jimmy Wales says, Christopher Dodd should be fired by the MPAA, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, in the heat of all of this, uh, the first thing that he said that I thought was fairly outrageous is he, he talked about Wikipedia's action, and he called it an abuse of power. 10 million people apparently contacted Congress, 10 million voters, actually 14 million people, 10 million voters contacted Congress. That is not an abuse.